U.S. credit rating. We need to talk about the Fed meeting minutes. And of course, we have lots of various earnings that we should talk about today because they will give us a key on what part of the economy is hot and what part of the economy is not. So let's get into it, folks, real quick. Let's start with the Fed meeting minutes. This, again, is a rehash of the last Fed meeting minutes. I uh, combed through the minutes, and these were my kind of big takeaways uh, in no particular order. They were just how I noted them after reading the meeting minutes. Uh, number one, some of the participants believe that more tightening might be required. Again, remember, this is the meeting uh, from about three or four weeks ago. So again, what I read there is not everyone believes that more tightening is required. Sometimes I read a sentence and I look at the opposite of it. So again, if some believe that more tightening is required, that also means some believe that we are at kind of the terminal rate. Terminal, again, being kind of the peak Fed rates. Number two, they do not do not want the market or provide a signal to the market that a rate cut is coming this year. This seemed to be a big deal, right? They, they, it appeared that it was okay for them to feel a pause was coming or maybe perhaps a skip, but the Fed meeting minutes were very clear. They did not want the market to think a rate cut was coming in 2023. Again, these are just the meeting minutes. It really doesn't go any farther than that, but I think it is interesting to kind of be a fly on the wall of that room. Number three, the staff, the staff of the Fed still believes a mild recession is in the offering. Four, banking uh, stress is likely on the way. And again, not only banking crisis, but I see that in think lending. We've talked about lending in the commercial space. Banks can't lend. I think it was JP Morgan saying, hey, banks just can't lend uh, in this environment. They need to save cash and do things of that nature. Uh, number five, inflation is declining slower than expected. Uh, and again, um, more rate hikes might be required. And then finally, uh, some of the Fed participants were less confident that more hikes will be needed. So lots of discussion there. Again, to me, one of the biggest kind of unanswered questions for me is how much of the tighter lending market, what is going on in commercial and regional banks, is also a rate increase or acting like a rate increase. You may have heard Jamie Dimon talk recently that rates may need to go higher. Well, I would argue uh, that one of the ways they can go higher is not necessarily with Fed rate increases, but just with the credit market tightening up. And I believe if you're in the market for credit outside of owner ox single family homes, you are likely feeling that already. So a lot going on in the Fed meeting minutes. Lots of earnings to talk about. Why don't we give a special shout out to anybody invested in NVIDIA? If you are a shareholder of NVIDIA, you are enjoying what is going on. NVIDIA, NVIDIA beat top line, beat bottom line, and had a huge beat on their forecast. One of the things I believe we joked about over the weekend was how many times NVIDIA would say AI during their earnings call. I don't know if anybody counted, but I think we had the over under at like 30. NVIDIA is clearly crushing it, clearly seeing huge demand for what they provide in the AI sector. If you own NVIDIA, uh, you are in good company today, and I think their valuation is getting close to $1 trillion. So uh, shout out to folks there. Kind of the flip slide, flip side, excuse me, Snowflake. We also talked about Snowflake. This is an area, a SaaS business where I have experience over the years, and I propose that they would see longer sales cycles, uh, delayed sales cycles, user collapse, all of that, and Snowflake while they beat top line and bottom line, they missed on guidance by a pretty significant part. And again, I would imagine that their sales pipeline is getting elongated and all of those things that I kind of talked about over the weekend. Uh, American Eagle lowers forecast. Again, these are mall operators. Uh, while guess raise dividend and raise guidance. That is interesting to me, right? I would call Guess and um, American Eagle 
both mall stores, both mall retail stores, one cut forecast, one raised forecast. Interesting to think about. Uh, other interesting earnings, we did get Best Buy. Best Buy missed on revenue, which means top line. Uh, did beat on bottom line, but they chose to hold their forecast, um, which is interesting. We have seen some uh, focused retailers really take it on the chin uh, a la Foot Locker, but it looks like Best Buy is holding firm. And then Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree uh, missed on earnings, missed on gross margins. Gross margins at Dollar Tree came in at 4.7%, significantly down from 5.9 being the expected. So you're seeing margin compression at the low end of the retail chain. Uh, lots going on. And then finally, I did get a line from Toll Brothers that I thought was interesting. Toll Brothers, again, being these luxury home builders. Over the last six or nine months or so, we have highlighted that new construction has been around 10 or 11%. Toll Brothers CEO said 10 to 15. I think he's exaggerating a skosh, but okay, 10 to 15 was a normal market. Today, because the Fed broke housing, new construction is 35% of transactions. Now, part of that is because transactions are down 40%, but again, new home builders are enjoying themselves, even the luxury builders, so lots going on there. Let's talk about Christopher Waller. Uh, Christopher Waller put out a, uh, a statement that should concern all of us. Remember, we talk about inflation. The easy stuff is over. Housing should be rolling over soon. And then there's the hard stuff. Christopher Waller is warning about housing. Christopher Waller said the housing rebound is raising questions about rent inflation. Maybe we are wrong. Maybe we are seeing rent inflation come back. Again, folks, what is happening right now given interest rates on homes? This is just, just the truth. Affordability is getting worse. Buyers demand capacity, willingness is all going down. But they've got to live somewhere. So what we are possibly seeing is rent inflation restart. That is not something I hope for or wish for. That would really make inflation even stickier than I feared. We have seen some early signs of rent inflation in April roaring back. My hope is that is a blip and we get through this. We can't have rent inflation take off again, otherwise, rates are going much, much higher. So again, interesting to see. Uh, even the Fed is talking about watching those housing and rent inflation. Again, Christopher Waller put that out. Let's talk about the real estate crash. Remember folks, when I talk housing market, I talk single family. When I talk real estate, it's everything. Bank of America, um, let me make this right. Oh, this was not Bank of America, my, sorry, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley has come out and said the real, the real estate crash amongst us will be worse than the Great Recession. Morgan Stanley is calculating a 40% crash peak to trough. Notice this is not a call of a year. This is peak to trough, which will likely be over multiple years. This is about commercial commercial real estate, which is office, retail, multifamily, all of it together. There's a lot of pain coming. We've brought it to you here first on this channel months ago. I do think it is interesting. Morgan Stanley says biggest ever. Bank of America actually refutes what Morgan Stanley says. These are the three things that Bank of America basically says, Morgan, you're wrong. And I think we should talk about them because I think there is something in these and there are some things that we have talked about. One, expect loan modifications. This is what I've called extend and pretend. Some of these commercial loans are so bad, so bad that what you are going to see is banks, instead of foreclosing and taking an asset that would force a write down, 
they will work with the operator to extend the term, to modify the loan. So I expect some of the dirtiest and ugliest and most painful commercial loans actually to become loan modifications, AKA extend and pretend. So it is, if, if this happens, you will see less inventory come to market. So that is point number one from Bank of America. Hey, David and Dave. Oh, you're enjoying my book. Awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, I had a lot of fun writing that book one rental at a time. So that's number one to refute Morgan Stanley from Bank of America. Number two, the office segment is small when you look at the commercial real estate portfolio. I actually had to think about this for a while. This, this, is, this, is, this could be good and bad. So again, if, if this right, the office pool of commercial real estate loans is small by comparison, who has the loans? So I fear that the loans for office, because you got to remember for 50, 100 years, office was the creme de la creme. It was the thing that you wanted. So I am guessing, it's an experienced guess, but still a guess nonetheless. We are talking about insurance companies and pension funds. Trophy office buildings, the loan, aka the debt, is likely sitting on the balance sheet of pension funds and insurance companies. Think about that for a minute. Remember that 350 California Street in San Francisco that was once valued at 350 that traded at 70? Somebody took that loss on the chin. If what Bank of America says is true and it's not a regional bank, it has to be someone Somebody owns that debt. My guess, insurance companies and pension funds. Like CalPERS, I wonder how much office debt they have. It's, it might be frightening. It really could be scary out there. And then three, the final thing that Bank of America says that Morgan Stanley is wrong and we won't see a 40% crash peak to trough is simply the underwriting is better the underwriting, the loan conditions, the qualified borrowers. I actually think that is, of all three, I think that one is misguided. Because where I see the max pain coming, it's not from the loans done in 2018, right? When you're doing a commercial loan, you typically get five, seven, or 10 year debt. So if you bought a deal in 2018 and it's resetting in 23, or you bought something in 2019 that resets in 24, you're probably okay. Cause you got the loan for 70% LTV. You've had five years of appreciation. You're probably sitting at 50% LTV. You're probably okay. So I am not worried about the loans going full term. I'm worried about the bridge debt. It's all those people that got in the last two years with two or three year bridge debt, one year options, floating rate debt. It's all that toxic stuff. That's the pain. So I think number three from Bank of America is a little misguided. And if I think they have to look at the bridge debt, it's not the full term loans. It's the bridge debt that I think causes the problem. So again, a real estate crash in commercial is going to be nasty. I'm going to guess 20, 25%. So maybe not the full 40, but it is coming. You can't drain liquidity from the market and not have some pain there. We've got to talk about Fitch. Fitch, if you don't know who they are, is a credit, credit rating agency. Fitch came out and has placed the U.S., the United States of America's debt or credit rating on watch for possible downgrade. That's not good. That's not good. We've got to get this debt ceiling nonsense behind us. It is the first thing to start getting lower rates to move forward. But yes, Fitch has placed the US credit rating uh, up for possible downgrade. This happened, I believe it was in 2011. Somebody placed us on um, credit watch. We ended up getting a deal done, but we st they still lowered our credit rating. I think it was S&P, but I could be wrong. Uh, so again, pretty interesting stuff there. So again, yes, yesterday afternoon, that's, that's not good. Uh, the U.S. credit rating has been placed on watch. 
legislature, legislators, get your butt in gear, get something done. We can't have that. Uh, another thing I did want you to know, something that I've done for you, obviously I have this amazing course called How to Get Started One Rental at a Time. I realize it is, for some of you, very expensive at $3.99. Hopefully for most of you, you realize the value that is in that course. Something I did is I took out a couple of sections that I thought you might be interested in and gave you a smaller price point. So I did create a seller financing course for you know 50 bucks and also raising private money. If you are interested in those courses, they are still inside the bigger course. But if you just want that little piece, uh, I do offer those sections now. And again, the content is not just mine. It is experts from across my portfolio of millionaires giving you what they are doing there. So I thought that might be interesting. Let's congratulate Sean for getting his golden ticket. What is a golden ticket? This is somebody doing the work, getting a deal done and closing it. You can get your golden ticket like Sean. You can only ever get one, but you can get an unlimited a number of these. If you're closing one, two, three deals a year and you want to get one of these, all you have to say is, hey, one rental at a time helped me some way and I will mail you a card. I'm a remarkably easy grader. If you think we helped you with house hacking, great. You buy your own home, great. I wanna send out as many cards as possible, but you've gotta close a deal like Sean here to get the golden ticket. Lastly, let's talk about out of area and out of state. This is an important conversation that I think we need to have together. First and foremost, I think all of us should congratulate the one and only Dion Dion shared with us yesterday that he is in escrow to buy a property near his market. I want you to hear what Dion did because some of you are in a rush to go out of state and you haven't done this yet. Folks, Dion's story earns financial freedom with 16 units basically investing in his backyard 30, 60 minutes away. For the last year or so, he has had this fascination with buying a property in Portugal. So he wasn't hunting a lot. He now has spent a month in Portugal and decided that's not for him. So he comes back and gets serious about his buy box. The buy box still has nothing. What did Dion do? And I think some of you should at least consider. He went 30 minutes more. So now it's not 60 minutes total. It's 90 minutes total. And Dion is like a kid in a candy store. Deals are making sense. He's written five or six offers and he has a, a property in contract right now. The point of this is, many of you realize you can't invest in your backyard like me. Expensive, Bay Area doesn't make sense. But some of you decide that it's best to go out of state because you believe the spreadsheets and the stories out of state. I would ask you to at least consider pulling out a map in drawing concentric circles, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours, I had to go two and a half hours. If I had to go out of state and get on airplanes, there's no chance I grow my portfolio. None, just not my thing. Some of you would do better looking out of area. So take that as words of wisdom. If it works for Dion, it might work for you. And the last thing I would tell you is it is so much easier to learn a market, learn your buy box, driving it, than having to fly there. Flying out of state to learn a market is hard. It's expensive. It's thousands and thousands of dollars every single time. For three years, we drove to Fresno twice a month. It is far easier to learn your buy box driving and so much cheaper. So take this as words of wisdom, give it a shot. In the end, like, subscribe, comment. Sean, one more time, congratulations. Dion, one more time. Don't forget, Dion, you don't get a ticket, Dion, until you close, but I look forward to sending you a card once it is closed. All right, folks, have an amazing day. Like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. This video will be live on Twitter at 9 a.m. Take care. Bye-bye.